that we never expected the impact to be to be as broad. Uh, we thought we were just going to help people strength train. We didn't realize we were going to be addressing so much back pain, knee pain, shoulder pain, uh, and that's uh, that. That's very very powerful, right? And the deeper I dig into that, I realize one in two Americans uh, suffers from some some sort of musculoskeletal pain, and it's it's something in terms of like me, moving the needle on health in America. It's it's something I'm starting to become a lot more passionate about. The more I read about it, the more I learn. What's up, fitness fans? Welcome back to the Future of Fitness podcast and interview series. This is your host, Eric Malzone, and this is episode number 163. I talked to Ali Orati. So uh, he is the CEO and founder of Tonal, and you can actually go to episode 111 of this show, and you get a great introduction into who Ali is and, uh, and his piece of tech, the Tonal. Crazy cool. And, you know, talking to him now a year later after that, um, roughly a year uh, later after that first interview and seeing where it's come, um, where it's going now, uh, the data, um, the opportunities that they're presenting for fitness professionals, personal trainers, remote coaches. Um, it's just wild. I mean, literally, this show is called The Future of Fitness, right? And it's all really encapsulated in, in this type of interview. Uh, this is where it's going. This is what the show is all about. This is the tech. This is where it all converges into one place. And this is where the opportunity is. So I can't emphasize enough. Like if you're not looking at this type of technology and seeing the opportunities there, and if you're, if you're looking at it as a threat or whatever, you're, you're looking at the wrong way. This is an opportunity. This is where it's going. And it's awesome. I mean, it's, it's a huge opportunity to, to make an impact in, in, in health and obesity and pain, all of these things, and it's going to blow your mind. So take notes on this, um, pause it every once in a while, let it sink in and, uh, and really enjoy it. So um, before we get into interview, it is brought to you by Level 5 Mentors, uh, happens to be my company, L-E-V-E-L, the number five mentors.com, uh, co-founded with Ken and Druco, and now we're building a team of coaches and mentors, and it's it's a coaching experience like any other. And the reason being is is our mindset and our approach and our values and what it means to be successful as an entrepreneur um, and a founder. And it's not just the money; it's important. Don't get me wrong; it's important. But your health, um, your lifestyle, your relationships, the purpose, all of that these are key factors that go into being truly successful. Right at the end of the day. At the end of the day, when our days are coming to an end, what are you going to want? Are you going to care about what's in your bank account? Sure. If it meant freedom in your life. And what does that freedom mean? What are you going to do with it? And what are the different types of freedom? These are questions that we ask on a daily basis. And if that type of message resonates with you, then go to Level 5 Mentors, L-E-V-E-L, the number five, mentors.com, and uh, book a call with us, and we're happy to talk to you. So do it. Why hesitate? doesn't cost you anything. Zero expectations. I just want to hear your story. And uh, it'd be great to talk to you. So without further ado, this is episode number 163 with Ali Orati of Tonal. Enjoy the ride. Let it blow your mind. We're live. Ali, welcome back. Thank you. Great to be back. Yeah, man. Um, God, it's just so much. You are in quite an exciting space. I mean, not only is your company growing with Tonal, we'll talk about that. Um, that's the day this recording. You got a kid on the way. I mean... Things are, uh, life's moving in a blistering pace for you, Ollie. Yeah, that's, that's right. We've, uh, just in the past year, we've grown a lot. I think, I think when we talked last time, I told you that we were just about to begin our nationwide expansion. Mm -hmm. We've now been available nationwide. We have, you know, uh, customers, members all over, all over the, the country using the product and reporting the progress. Uh, we've had some vibrant communities form. Uh, online where they're getting together and celebrating each other's wins and answering each other's questions. Uh, we've opened up showrooms, <laughs> five of them. Uh, there's, there's been a lot going on. It's been, it's been a very exciting, exciting year. Uh, and then, and then I, you know, I, I, as I think I mentioned to you, I'm, I'm about to have my first child, uh, which means that I need this product more than I ever have, uh, because <laughs> getting to the gym just became even more impossible. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, where are the showrooms? I don't know if I ever asked you that. Where are those? Uh, San Francisco. Mm -hmm. uh, we have um, Los Angeles, uh, Dallas, New York City, and New Jersey. Awesome. Yeah. Um, let's. You mentioned community, and that it's it's a curious point for me because you know, like we were talking before recording, like 
if you had told me that 10 years ago, there was going to be home devices like Tonal or, you know, your competitors and, and Peloton and Mirror, and people are going to be paying what they pay. And then there's going to be subscription base and people are going to, you know, put it in their home and use it all the time. And then it's going to have a community on top. I would have thought that's crazy. It's never going to work. Right. But here we are. And yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I think, I think, I think people's in the last decade, people's like notion of community has, has changed, right? There's, uh, there was a time when community happened in a, in a third space, in a physical third space. You would go to a community center or church or a gym or, you know, you would go somewhere, you'd meet other people, you begin to build these associations and, you know, casual conversations would turn into deep conversations. Uh, and, and right now uh, with, you know, as people do more and more stuff virtually and in home, uh, you know, us and other, you know, strength, tonal with strength training, but also some of the cardio products on the market, um, they're going online onto, onto places like Facebook. Uh, and forming groups, affinity groups with people where, where they're talking to each other about the workouts and asking questions and supporting each other and celebrating each other's wins. Uh, and then, and then actually building, um, not just kind of the, the passing conversations, but, but having really deep conversations and exchanging phone numbers and texting each other and, uh, and things like that. So it's, uh, it's, it's the same thing that used to happen in the gym. Uh, it's now happening online and it's pretty, it's pretty incredible to watch. So what's like what, with these online communities, um, what, what's, what's the, I guess, what's the glue between, you know, obviously the equipment people are, are people like posting workouts and asking questions about like, how do I do that? Like what, what's the glue? What's the starting point for those communities? Um, I think as, as far as I can tell, and I, I think Tonal's a little bit different than, than some of the other ones, uh, Tonal, the, the core of Tonal's community is, um, is motivation and, uh, and education. Uh, strength training is, you know, as, as you, you're, you're well aware is, uh, is a more complicated thing, mm -hmm. uh, than say cardio. Like we all know how to run, right. You know, we've been doing it since we were kids. Uh, we all know how to cycle at all, you know, we've been doing this since we were kids. Strength training is a little bit more complex. And so folks are going online to, to ask each other questions like, Hey, uh, I'm, you know, uh, we just released this new program called go big or go home, which is very focused on hypertrophy mm -hmm. and uses advanced modes like eccentric overload and things like that. So. Uh, and, and so people are going on, there asking questions as they're going through this four week program for the first time, they're asking each other questions. Uh, they're asking like, how do I incorporate my cardio routine into this? You know, they're asking about nutrition. And so, you know, as, as people are going into these, these programs for the first time, or even coming onto Tonal for the first time, a lot of people who bought Tonal, I'd say about a third, uh, never strength trained before Tonal. They did a lot of cardio and kind of hit a wall where, where they now know that they need to, to strength train more. Uh, and, and tonal is their way to do that. And so they're, they're going in and asking questions like, Hey, my knee hurts when I do, you know, when I do a, a squat, um, what can I do about it? And, and so there's a lot of knowledge sharing. Uh, and then the, the other one, of course, is just motivation, uh, having people, uh, get up there, post progress photos of themselves and having everyone effectively virtually high five them and acknowledge the progress they're making. Uh, it's the same thing that happens when you see someone at the gym and you're like, Hey, you're, you're looking really good. You've been, you've been at this for a while and I'm starting to see the results. Congrats. That same, that same sort of stuff's happening online. Uh, and I think we're, we're human beings. We, we want to be acknowledged. We want to be celebrated. Uh, and, and it's a powerful thing. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And it's, you know, I, I'm pretty amazed with, um, you know, the lifestyle I have too, where I don't, I don't see a whole lot of people in person. I I've, um, like I just saw one of my clients, Jay Croft, uh, in person for the first time, you know, last week. And I was I mean, I'm like, I yeah. felt like I've known this, this person forever. Right? right. And all we've done is zoom or chat, um, you know, various things. And it's funny how like the, the community can actually, in my, I guess I'm surprised with how strong an online community can be. Right. Without that, yeah. That touch. The, the reason, yeah. The, I think the reason, I mean, the physical touch is missing, but what, what is there is it's always, it's always in your pocket. Uh, and so I, uh, I can turn on the tonal community for myself at 5am in the morning, midnight, 2am, um, you know, while I'm, you know, walking two blocks to a meeting, like anytime I have a free moment, I can check in with the community. And I think it's harder to do that in, in real life now, uh, in some ways online has brought us closer, but the physical world population density traffic, um, has, has, has also pushed us further apart. Right. Well, um, I'm probably, scale. yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I probably keep better touch with people who live, live across the country than I do with people who live in San Francisco. Cause the ones here, I have a false sense of like, Oh, I can just see them next weekend. Yeah. Uh, but, but I don't, <laughs> and then, <laughs> you know, 
So I, I, I think I think community is just gonna, it's going to continue to be a bigger and bigger piece um, as as this world evolves and and we we end up opting for convenience most convenient way to work out. I think we're going to fill the, those those human gaps in other ways. Yeah, time time is a, is becoming a. Uh, I mean, it's always been the most important commodity, right? But now it's it seems like people are really starting to realize, and our lives are busy. They're just busy. You know, we're we're very good in North America and, and West Western civilization in keeping busy. And uh, you know, we think all we have so many. I mean, I look at my calendar. I'm like, why? Do I, how do I get booked from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m.? Like, how do I stay that busy? And then, so those little pockets of time, like 20, 30 minutes, become super valuable. And that's where something like Tunnel comes in. Um, you know, I think I, I like to steer the conversation a little bit too to a topic that I think is tremendously large, right? which is, you know, as this stuff is now, it's not a fluke anymore. People are getting in-home technology like Tonal and they're using it. They're building communities around it, right? How is the fitness industry and the fitness professional going to adapt to these, you know, changes? And really, you know, if you look at it the right way, it's opportunity, right? We're, we're accessing a whole pool of people that weren't accessed before. So how, how in your mind is, is the fitness professional? I mean, I have plenty of thoughts, but I want to hear it from you. How do you think we're going to adapt? Sure. Well, I mean, Tonal, um, Tonal is an in-home, is the, the first ever like in-home digital strength training system. Uh, it's yeah. super, it's actually behind me on the wall here, but it's super compact. It's about the size of a flat screen TV and on the left and right are arms that pop out and you can reconfigure them into a series of positions and, and literally do every exercise you can, you can dream of. And so, so now, um, you know, it used to be that you had to go to a gym or to a personal trainer, uh, in order to gain access to the equipment you needed because getting it into your home was, was really impossible. And, and now anyone can have all the equipment they need in their home. Uh, and then a lot of the, you know, things I think we talked about even last time we were on, on, you know, I was on the podcast, um, there's a lot of the things that, that human beings used to do when they were helping you work out, counting your reps, helping you choose how much weight you should lift. Um, those types of things are, are now, they're just software. They're automated. Tonal counts your reps. There's artificial intelligence that measures how strong you are uh, and determines how much weight you should lift and decides when it's time for you to go up and down in weight. And it happens in one pound increments. So it's really, really, really accurate. Um, and so I think the, the first the first step is just an acknowledgement of what is it that machines are good at and what is it that human beings are good at? Right. Uh, and so I, I think, uh, when I think about the, you know, the industry, uh, and in the context of U S society, the last time I did the math, there were about enough personal trainers to serve 0.3% of the U S population. So, uh, about, you know, um, three, three and a thousand, uh, three, three personal trainers for every, every thousand, uh, people who needed a personal trainer. Um, and so, so, um, really like to just, there aren't very many, uh, professionals who, who really, um, who really have the expertise. Uh, and I don't think it's about, you know, giving people access to equipment or counting the reps. I think it's about helping them figure out how this fitness thing fits into their whole life. Uh, it's about being a, a true coach and a true guide and a strategic planner, uh, because we all know that if you do just nutrition, you're not going to lose weight. If you do just fitness, you're not going to lose weight. Um, that it's a combination of, of exercise and nutrition and recovery sleep, right? Uh, you could have the perfect diet and perfect workout routine. If you don't sleep, um, you will not lose weight. <laughs> right. So, so, you know, there, there's, there's this more kind of holistic guidance and, and figuring out how to guide people. Uh, to what their true goals are and understanding their, their lives more holistically. Um, and that human connection of, of accountability and finding out, like having the conversation, why didn't you, why did you miss your workout this morning? Right. Why were you feeling that way? Uh, and, and so, you know, it takes knowledge of physiology and nutrition and recovery. Uh, and it takes that same level of expertise. Um, uh, but, but I think the industry is going to have to shift more and more into, into, into that. Um, if all uh, folks are doing is giving people access to equipment uh, and and being there to you know to to mark down their progress on a piece of paper, uh, sorry that that's been automated. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, it plays into the much bigger, bigger and uh, very popular conversation of you know what's going to happen when machine learning, AI, automation, all of this is becoming a, just a more more. Um, it's just becoming normal in our life. Like yeah. you know. 
so much of it is, is, is automated now. And, you know, um, the optimist will always say, well, that's, that's fantastic. You know, um, it's going to allow us to elevate to higher, higher, you know, order work for, you know, lack of a better term. And I think what we're talking about too, is, you know, I've, I've gone at every stage of, of the fitness industry and, you know, um, I love my personal training clients, but I have to be honest and say it was one of the most draining things because, you know, if you're there with them for an hour, because some obligatory rule that 60 minutes is the, the average span of a workout, right? We don't know who said Where that. that it just yeah. fits in conveniently with calendars, I guess. So you sure. sit there and, you know, a lot of times it would, you'd be counting reps and, you know, kind of having small talk and, you know, um, a lot of therapy really right? Just helping people with their problems. And I found it to be a very inefficient use of my time overall. And I got paid well for personal training, but it was, it just wasn't. And, I, and that's why I started turning turn to remote coaching. I'm like, okay, I can just lay out a program for a month. And then when I talk to my clients, you know, it's going to be very focused on the big picture. Right? That's right. And I think that's where all of this can head to is you can, as a coach, you can look at this as an opportunity, you know, and how many households this is in and how many it's going to be in. I'm like, okay, how do I access that? And now how do I become a higher order coach versus a trainer? It, it's kind of the worst kept secret, but uh, up until this point, users who use Tonal have, have had to follow workouts that we've created with our, with our coaches. And uh, the feature that's shifting in just a few weeks uh, allows people to author their own workouts. Uh, so uh, rather than following a workout that we've pre-created or just completely freestyling it, uh, they can now pre-create a workout uh, follow along and will automatically choose the weight for them, log, log everything that they've done, uh, and generate the post-workout report. And so if they're working with a coach or, you know, some sort of a personal trainer, uh, they can certainly help them, help them with that progress as well. Yeah, that's, that's huge. That's a big feature and probably it'll be out right around the time that this podcast releases. So how, how does that, um, I guess if I'm, if I'm a, a trainer, fitness professional, remote coach, um, I'm thinking like, well, how, how do I get ahead of that? How do I get involved in that and be kind of a early adopter of such, such thing? Because that's, that's tremendous. I mean, you can, I'm when I was, I did a lot of remote coaching when it started to get popular, um, especially in, in the area I was at, there was a lot of people who just want to pay access to my gym. Right. And I'm like, well, no, my, my gym rates are, you know, 200 bucks a month. You can pay that and just have access to open gym but that doesn't make sense. Right. right. So now it makes a lot more sense for people who, you know, have those remote coaching to, to like actually get a device that's in home. Yeah. I, I, I'm, my mind spinning because I see all the opportunity now to, it, it connects, it connects, right. It finally connects with the, the wild, wild, the huge pool of fitness professionals and what they can get access to. So what, yeah. How, what do they do? What do we do? As well, fitness if, if I was, if I was a fitness professional in this, in this new world, yeah. um, I would, I would be going out and, finding clients who don't need me to meet with them three times a week. Yep. Uh, and I'd really be asking them, what equipment do you have access to? What equipment are you willing to buy? Um, and how can I be your guide in putting together a more, more holistic, uh, fitness journey, uh, that also includes considerations like sleep, sleep and nutrition, um, so that I can really figure out how to help you achieve, achieve your, your goals holistically. Right. Uh, you know, tonal does, does a lot for people. Uh, but if, People, if someone's a really, really big runner, tonal is only, you know, might, might only be half of their fitness journey. Um, and uh, their their nutrition probably needs to shift, right? They're probably not the same nutrition if you're a heavy runner versus if you're he a heavy strength trainer. Uh, and, you know, sleep matters. Um, uh, risk of stress fractures matters uh, when, you're, when you're running a lot. So, so all of these things, you know, having someone who can really guide you is important. So I, I would be looking for people, but I, the conversation I would be having isn't how many times a week um, can I meet with you? It's really, what is your life? How's your life set up? And how can I really help you get, get there? Yeah. And what's cool about that too, is it, and it obviously provides a huge opportunity to, to be new and innovative as a fitness professional, but it also gets you out of that time, time for money trap. You yeah. Know, yeah. Is, yeah. It's a it, burnout it's, factor. Yeah. It's, it's, it's actually no longer about how many hours, um, you work. It's about how big of an impact you can have on someone's life. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Who, uh, I don't know if I ever asked you this, Ollie, but who, who, what, who's buying these things? Like who's, who's kind of a typical avatar for someone who's buying tonal? I think that'd be useful information for people. Yeah. Uh, I would say, um, I would say two, two groups of people. Uh, first thing I think that's really fascinating is the gender splits about 50, 50. 
uh, <laughs> which is pretty atypical for a weight room. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I think that's, that's an important thing of note, but, but when you just look at people's fitness lives, um, we really have two big groups of people that light up. The first one uh, is people actually already exercise quite a bit. They exercise, they already, before they buy tonal, they exercise twice a week uh, okay. or more. And, and they're buying tonal either because they know they need to incorporate more strength training into their routine um, or because they know that they do a little bit of strength training but really want to take it to the next level. Um, the other group of people are people who uh, at some point worked out a lot and now they aspire to work out two or more times a week, but uh, they've become very sporadic. And, and the reason they're sporadic is, is family and work obligations. And for tonal, it's 100% a convenience play. Uh, and, and I think those are, those are an interesting group of people because those are people where, uh, uh, even a personal trainer or a coach is too inconvenient for them. Uh, if they have to go carve out time in their calendar to go meet with someone at a specific location, you've already asked too much of them. Right. And, uh, and you, you can't reach those people with traditional personal training. You, you actually have to go remote if you want to reach them. Right. And that's, it's a pretty big part of the market for us. Yeah. And, I, um, I mean, those two, those two, like two very valuable <clears throat> clientele too. I mean, for fitness professionals, you know, people who already have the habit, they just need a little push, right. And yeah. accountability. And the big thing that, and anyone has been in the trenches long enough as a fitness professional knows that, you know, it's not necessarily the pro the program design is important, right? Not, not discrediting that, but getting in and helping people change the psychology, the, the behaviors, the habits, right that are have gotten to the point where they are now where they don't want to be so how do you start changing those things that's a delicate process that takes somebody who's actually you know working on mastering the craft and this elevates you you know having something like this we're like okay that's all preloaded go do the programs and then you know when we spend time together we'll review your actual work this is how i'm playing it out in my mind you know, we can review how your workouts are going we can change and adapt the programming there if we need to but let's really talk about okay well what's going on in your life like all the different lifestyle factors and then how do we start you know building in layer by layer healthy habits that one year from now will completely change your life and i think right. that's that's what most fitness professionals want to do they get stuck in the well i need to sell x amount of private training sessions just to make you know make rent. Right. And then they get stuck into these 60, 70 hour work weeks and then they burn out and then we lose good people. And then no one wants to get in the fitness industry anymore. Right. Right. Yeah. So and and now are. there's no rent, no rent to cover because you're, you're serving people who are, you know, have their own equipment, have their own space. And so, you know, you're not, you're not having to rent a facility or expect, expect folks to come to you. Uh, the other thing is with the motivation piece, uh, we get to help because we have, we have all of this, this data, um, that can really help with the story. So, um, we have, you know, after every workout, you get to see what your workout volume was, uh, after every, uh, workout, we, we update your, your holistic strength score. And so you get, you get to see yourself getting stronger. Uh, and so this, this effectively proof of progress, uh, right, right now for a lot of people, the, the biggest proof of progress that they have access to is the scale. And we both know that's a terrible way to tell, to, to tell someone, uh, to show someone whether or not they're making progress. Uh, and, and here we have a lot of other, other metrics. And so when someone's working out and, you know, on average, they're doing eight or 9,000 pounds of volume in a workout. And then, you know, 10 weeks later, they're doing 13,000 uh, pounds of volume. Uh, they feel good because they're watching this number tick up after every workout. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, so it's, for a lot of folks, it's just about giving them something they can, you know, they can measure and see, see their progress with. Uh, yeah. And the more tools we provide, I think the easier the job becomes for, you know, for coaches. Um, data. I'm glad you brought that up. Right. Like yeah. that, I was just, um, I had a previous interview here it was uh, Ian Lane who does keep AI and it's, you know, it's, um, machine learning AI for retention for gyms essentially and, and put into a short sentence, but he's like the data that we have is now just starting to be leveraged. Right. And it was amazing to me. I'm like, well, you know, how much data are you collecting on people? He's like, we, we can predict when people are going to cancel months mm -hmm. in advance. I was like, for, well, how? He's like, well, if you actually look at the data we're collecting, even the most basic things of where someone lives, their, you know, uh, male, female, um, what neighborhood they live in, um, what their, their frequency is, when they show up, all these, whether they have kids, we can predict a lot. I was like, I never thought about it that way. Yeah. And that's just a, that's like just kind of a, a pretty limited data points, right? There's not a whole lot of data, but there's still a lot of predictive power. In it. 
What do you, what do you see? Like, with, cause you guys must be collecting a ton of data, right? How, how yeah. is that? How do you see the future of that playing out? Uh, I think it pushes physiology forward. So ah, cool. uh, this, this is, this is the first, uh, first time fitness has been completely closed loop. And what I mean by that is, you know, I think that the trackers that we all have on our wrists, uh, they're observe. Yeah, exactly. You want to their observation devices. They, they, they collect data. Uh, and then that's kind of where it ends. Uh, and there's maybe a little bit of analysis. And, and if you're lucky, a little bit of recommendation. Um, we actually take it all the way through compliance where the user actually does what we said. And then we measure how they did relative to our recommendation. Uh, and so we're, we're actually operating more in the realm of experimentation rather than ob- pure observation where we make a recommendation, they do it, we see how they did, and then we decide what they're going to do next, right? Um, and so what that actually does is it, it helps us push the, the science of physiology forward in terms of deciding how much weight people should lift um, and deciding what the best factors are to decide when someone's weight should, should go up. Um, is, it, is it power? Is it range of motion? Is it velocity? What is, what is the tell that says that this is the right time to really bump someone's, someone's weight up? And, and today, the science on it's limited. Right. And so we're, we're literally, you know, we've done, we have over a hundred thousand workouts, uh, worth of data, uh, already, already logged and anonymized, which I think might make us the largest physiology, like strength training physiology data set in history. Uh, and, <laughs> and, and, and the data is just ticking up. And so, uh, and so it, you know, eventually I think we're, we're going to, we're going to get really good at physiology. The other thing is because it's a digital weight machine and we can change the weight dynamically, like we have a spotter built in and it sees you struggling. It will adjust the weight to, to help you finish your last few reps and so much so that we, we now have two flavors of the spotter. Uh, and we're talking about making even more, but, uh, uh, a bunch of our, um, uh, our, our coaches were in here the other day and they've been working on something called, um, accommodating resistance, um, or basically smart reps where we actually change the weight throughout your rep to match your, um, your range of motion and the, the biomechanics think of a bicep curl at the different, different angles. You, you actually want different weight, uh, in order to maximize load on your muscle. Okay. You, you know what I'm talking about. Anyone yeah, who went yeah, to school <laughs> knows what I'm talking about. And so, you know, they, they were, they they've been building these modes and I was just playing with them with a bunch, they were demoing a bunch of them to me the other day. And I, I said, you know, I said, what is, you know, um, is this proven to be effective? And they're like, Ali, it's never been done before. Like we're going to be the ones, who, we're going to be the ones who prove it. Yeah. Right. And so I, I think, I think we are pushing the, the physiology science forward. Um, I think also on the psychology side, like the, the same types of things that you were just talking about with gym memberships, we actually, um, for about four weeks in, we can, we can predict how much someone is going to work out in the whole next year. Uh, we can we tell how sporadic and consistent they're going to be. And we have a bunch of correlations where we can tell within like four weeks of just, of just behavior, how often do they work out and for how long and what time of day. Uh, we can tell whether they're the types of person, type of person who's just going to be like military consistent or the type of person who's going to be really sporadic is going to need a lot of like motivation and push notifications and, uh, and actually in some cases, phone calls to keep them, keep them working out. Uh, you so call people? That's... Oh yeah. 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 We do. Do you, I mean, do you ever call people? Do you ever be like, does anyone ever pick up the phone and be like, Hey, it's Ali from Tonal, uh, the CEO. I, I have never called someone because they weren't working out. I've called people for other reasons. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. I definitely, I, def- I definitely, I probably talk to at least the customer a week minimum. Uh, and so, yeah, I do, I do call people, and I'm, I'm active in our, on our online member communities. Uh, but no, I've never. <laughs> I think that would be kind of uh, maybe, maybe intimidating. Like, no, hi, this is the founders, CEO of Tonal. <laughs> I noticed that you haven't worked out in the last week. What's going on? Uh, but we do have people here who do call people when they, when they miss workouts. And, and it's because at the end of the day, like I, I believe this is the greatest piece of fitness equipment ever created. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if someone has it on their wall and they're not using it, I feel bad. I'm like, this is, you know, you got to use this thing, you know? Yeah. Uh, that's cool, man. I, I didn't know you guys did that. I mean, that, that brings it to a whole level. So yeah, I'm curious too, because you created this for a very specific reason. I mean, you, everyone can go listen to your story on our previous podcast interview, but you know, you're journey and, and then you want to help more people and make an impact and all that. And, and, and it's working and it's your primary goal was to, to get this out into the world, right? Just a better, a better mousetrap for fitness. Kind of like along the lines of data, has there been any other like unexpected things that have come about from the technology? Like things you're like, well, I never would have thought that happened, but here we are. Um, there, there's a, there's a few things happening that we, 
we we didn't expect. And so, you know, we, we saw them on our website and they're, they were intended for consumer use, but we've, um, we've had personal trainers buy them and just use them to train people in their own spaces. Um, this is actually a, a gross violation of our terms of service, but we, we found that someone had, had bought a bunch of them and was renting them out by the hour. <laughs> uh, and we're like, we looked at each other and we're like, well, what should we do with this? <laughs> this is not, not what we planned for, but it's, it's interesting. Right. And, uh, and so we, we, we called them up and we went over there and, and had a chat. Uh, and you know, I, I think we, we still have to decide where this goes, where that goes ultimately, but that was surprising. Um, I think the other thing that was, was surprising is just the, um, the variety of outcomes we've been able to drive. Uh, we, if you, if you asked me, you know, the day I launched this product, um, with the team over here, uh, how are you guys thinking about back pain? Uh, I would have basically said, look, we are focused on core fitness, just like the the core, the core of of fitness and people who are looking to strength train and and get stronger and and get lean. Uh, and that getting into back pain is a complex thing. If someone has, you know, some sort of musculoskeletal pain or something like that, it's complex and, and, you know, we're not sure we're ready to tackle that yet except we actually have people emailing us saying that, that they bought tonal, they've been um, just following our regular workout programs and because they're back and their core has gotten stronger uh, back pain that they've had their entire life has gone away. Uh, and I think that's something we never, we never expected. We never expected the impact to be, to be as broad. Uh, we thought we were just going to help people strength train. We didn't realize we were going to be addressing so much back pain, knee pain, shoulder pain. Uh, and that's uh, that, that's a very, very powerful. Right. The deeper I dig into that, I realize one in two Americans uh, suffers from some, some sort of musculoskeletal pain. And it's it's something in terms of like me, moving the needle on health in America. It's it's something I'm starting to become a lot more passionate about the more I read about it, the more I learn. Yes, I 100 percent agree. I and in fact, after this, I have a meeting about bringing um, a product to market where, <clears throat> you know, it's not about fat loss. It's not about this. It's about pain. You know, how do I yeah. how do I get out of pain, whether it be, and I'm 43 now, man, like I didn't think I've, I've lived knock on wood. I've had a pretty injury, you know, minor sports injuries. I always joke. I only have had one injury just keeps moving around, but nothing big, you know, no broken bones, no surgery or anything like that. Um, but now at 43, I'm starting to notice that my, my big focus is just staying out of pain and being active and Mm -hmm. like, you know, my knee, my knee aches now. Right. That never happened before. My back is, yeah. <laughs> right? that never happened before. And I right. think there's a lot of people out there who, especially as our life spans get longer, well, you know, they, traditionally they have been getting longer until recent generations, right? <clears throat> um, right. We want to live a longer, fuller life. And weight loss is how it's, it's always, we've always started with weight loss in the fitness industry, but I think we can start tr- looking at, like that statistic you said, one and two, crazy, right? People are in pain. Right, mm-hmm. live sitting yeah. in cells. Things we're not moving the way we're supposed to move, and you know, you look at someone like um, Dr. Sean Pastuch at Active Life RX, and he's his whole business is around teaching coaches how to get people out of pain. Right, good men of, of foundation training, getting people out of pain and a better function. Um, I think that. I mean, and then I, I look at your product, and as you were talking, I was like, oh, physical therapy, right? Totally. If, if anyone's ever gotten physical therapy, you know the stuff you do. Training. <laughs> yeah, it's like you don't need someone watching you to do that. You know, it's right. a lot of this just prescribed correct well, when you do it. You, you sort of do and you don't. So, so the biggest challenge with the physical therapy market is compliance. Yes. Right. You, you, don't someone, you don't need someone to watch you doing it. You just need someone to make sure you did it. Right? <laughs> right. And, uh, totally guilty and tonal, over here too. To, yeah. tonal, tonal will count your reps, right? Uh, and, and, and on the pain side, you know, I think for most Americans, when you tell them, you know, you need to exercise, their mind goes to cardio, right? And cardio doesn't make pain better, right? If anything, it could make it worse. Uh, and so that's, that's kind of the, the power, the power of just, just making people stronger. Cause if you make them strong in the first place, you might actually prevent onset. Uh, and I think that's really where you want to be. You, you, you never want them to, to get to a place where they have pain. You just want them to be strong enough, uh, that, that it never manifests in the first place. Yeah. Right. What, um, what, what patents do you guys have on this thing? I mean, and there's so many cool, you know, features what you have. I mean, the, the electromagnetic resistance is, is crazy cool. Is that one of yeah. the patents that you guys have? Yes. So we, we've, um, we filed, um, we filed over 20 patents, uh, to date. And, and some of it is on the core electromagnetics. Some of it is on the advanced blade modes of like the spotting and the you know, eccentric overload chains. Um, uh, some of it is on, uh, on the AI. 
uh, and the way it integrates into the system and into the videos. Um, our videos are actually uh, adapted. They, the pacing of the video changes, the instructions that you hear change to each person. Uh, and so there's a lot of patents in, in the way that that happens. Uh, and then uh, the joints, right? So, so Tonal is the most compact strength training machine. And we, we literally had to reinvent um, the, the joints. So the shoulder joint, which allows you to move in, in three degrees of freedom. Uh, there's a lot of uh, invention that happened in, in that joint on, on Tonal. Uh, and, uh, and overall, the way the machine is set up and the way the arms stow. So, so we have patents that pretty much cover, cover all of it that we, that we filed. And um, a number of them have already issued, including the, the most core one. Like if you ask me, Ali, what, of the 20 pounds, what is the one, <laughs> what is the one that like, is the most important? That one, that one's already issued. Uh, and so I think that's, that's pretty powerful for us. Yeah, yeah. It, it really is. I mean, I, I think about the, um, you know, being a guy who loves the iron game too, I seeing what, or I haven't used this yet, right? I got to get, I, first of all, I got to get my hands on it, but the, the, the way you describe the electromagnetic resistance and all of the favorable aspects of it, I mean, that alone, and then you top it off with everything else that you guys do with, with the machine itself. That's, that's a crazy push forward. It really is. It is because it's, um, it's the first time that you can control resistance instantaneously. Uh, we, we can literally with the click of a button, we can go from zero to 200 pounds. You click the button again, it'll go from 200 back to zero. Uh, and, uh, it allows, you know, it, it just allows you to do things that you couldn't do. So we have a mode that emulates bands. So it has that rubbery feel to it. Uh, and it's just, it's just us knowing that as you pull further, we're just going to crank the weight up linearly and then crank it back down. And it feels like, like forget the math happening behind the scenes. Like if you close your eyes, it feels like you're pulling on a rubber band. Right. Uh, and, and it's just, it's this dynamic resistance is, is important. When people touch tonal for the first time, the things that they say is, uh, it feels like a real weight machine. It's heavier than I expected. It's smoother than I expected. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and I think, I think the, 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 the interesting kind of nuance there is people look at tonal because it's a small machine and it's really sleek. I think they tend to underestimate it. They tend to assume that th- this is going to be a little bit like a toy uh, and they don't realize how much like advanced core technology is, is in this thing, making it do what it does. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's feels, I mean, in some ways it feels like science fiction, right? Yeah. Uh, but it's not, it's real. It's actually like, it's on the market. <laughs> People have it. Uh, I work out on it every day. It's, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's incredible. It really is. Uh, and, you know, and I, I'd love to take take credit for it, but you know, we have well over a hundred people here who've been working on this for over three years, right? Uh, and it took like three and a half years just to get the product out to market. And we have electromagnetics experts and mechanical engineers and people who worked in aerospace and just like it, it took some real, you know, some real brain power to to make this thing happen. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. How, what with your workouts? What are they? Are they an hour, 20, 30 minutes? How do you, how do you uh, so I, um, uh, I tend to follow workouts by one of our coaches, coach Jackson, uh, who focuses a lot on, uh, on hypertrophy. Uh, mm-hmm. so the types of programs that he runs are like four weeks to fat loss, burn and build. Um, he's also one who just released this program I mentioned earlier called go big or go home. <laughs> but, uh, I tend to follow his and his, his workouts are, are nominally programmed to be 40 minutes long, but they take me an hour to get there. Uh, and, and like I said, the system is, is adaptive. And so if you need more time, it'll kind of stretch things out. Uh, but it, it, it takes me, you know, it takes me a while because they're, they're very intense programs. Yeah. Um, yeah. Typically I'm pushing like 18,000 pounds of, uh, of volume, uh, in each workout. Wow. Which, which is quite a bit. It's on the higher end of what our system system typically prescribes. Yeah. I know. Like, I don't even know. I don't even know how to relate to that metric. You know, okay. <laughs> I'm like, well, I don't think anybody does. It's a new metric. For, well, I've, uh, I, I actually met some personal trainers, uh, maybe five years ago who were, who were tracking volume. They just do reps times weight and yeah. they'd add it up. And, and it was just their way of making sure that, that every workout was about right sized. And so on a day where you're doing a lot of heavy legs, um, maybe it'll go lighter on the upper body or, or what have you. So it's just a good way to know, like when you're sitting down programming on paper, how do you know if you've, you've created workouts where like your Tuesdays are really heavy and your Thursdays are, are a little bit too light. Yeah. Um, so, well, it's, it's been, I mean, obviously volumes been around for a long time, but it's been very rarely applied to, I mean, when I think of volume, I think of <clears throat> expertly coached athletes, 
right? Or people who, yeah. you know, when you look yep. at periodization and, and total volume and intensity and all of those things that go into really good periodization. But for the general population, it's, I mean, yeah. it, volume is just, isn't it? If you're, I mean, a fitness professional honors himself, it's not as important to track as right. all the things you could be doing. The volume is like, it's, 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 not, it's not out there, but to have it so easily accessible through what you do. It now becomes a thing. Yeah. It becomes a thing. Yeah. That's yeah. It. It's like, it's like, I mean, a good example is steps, right? No one, no one ever tracked their steps. And now everyone, everyone has a sense of how many steps they take a day. Yeah. Right. And you, you can tell whether, you? sorry. Do you have a oh, do I have, uh, I, I do like 15,000 a day. Whoa. Typically. Well, I walk, I walk to and from work. So, okay. Uh, yeah, it, it adds up. <laughs> it's, it's interesting. I mean, you, you're, I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm thinking about like the, the, all the possible applications for electromagnetic resistance and, you know, all the things you must do. You, does your mind just spin out of control sometimes? And like, what, what this could be moving forward? Like this literally could be implanted in the gym of the future, right? Yeah. Yes. You, I mean, order totally. is, we're already doing yeah. it against your policy, but you're doing it. Yeah. Those, those walks, I, I do daydream a lot about kind of the possibilities, uh, but I'm also responsible for marketing, manufacturing, um, software development, uh, you know, uh, we run a production studio, uh, in down in Los Angeles. So, so there's, there's also a lot of other, <laughs> other things on my mind. Uh, and so I'm thinking about a lot all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I bet. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I just think about like, you know, applying to some, some, some sort of like barbell training, you know, um, similarity where people can, you know, do really have, but the, the safety of it. Right. I mean, you know, if you're going for, if you're pushing for a one rep max on your back squat, you know, you got to have spotters or, you know, right. really good rig, right. Especially if you're lifting heavy, but this could eliminate all that could be incredibly safe. <laughs> Just like, yeah, for sure. For sure. And even, even with the barbell, we've, we've actually, you know, now that it's digital, we have some safety mode. So, uh, we, we actually require you to keep the bar relatively, um, level. Hmm. Uh, and if your bar ever gets tilted either intentionally or unintentionally, we will cut, we'll cut the weight. Uh, and so we, we put that in because, you know, we, we've all seen those gym fail videos of people on, on a bench with the bar across their chest and it's just too much weight for them. Yeah. And now we just have a really easy way, just a, a simple twist to, to tilt the bar and you can dump the weight. Uh, and it's super, super powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've seen those gym fails in person. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you've probably been there, but also be a lot. So <laughs> yeah, I think I've been a gym fail. Um, <laughs> What, uh, so you guys are launching, launching the opportunity to create workouts within the total. Um, I, I'm curious from a programming standpoint, is it going to be like, just like using any other programming software or what, what's the interface going to be going to look like? Uh, we, we have a mobile app. And so you, you go on our mobile app and you just choose the exercises that you want. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you're, you're arranging them into super blocks. Uh, so like a block one, block two, how many, how many cycles do you want to do on the super block? So how many sets total? And then you set rep targets for each exercise. We also have the ability to insert, um, mandated rest where like a will have a rest timer. Uh, and, um, and then the weights are automatically chosen for you. They're, they're computed as a combination of how strong we believe you are and how many reps you've, you've chosen and we'll automatically set that up. We also just recently released, um, a smarter spotter. Uh, so I was telling you earlier, we have like two flavors of the spotter. One is one is a spotter, which is kind of like a buddy just helping you out at the gym. And the other one is really more intended for burnout sets. So like a, you know, like a drop set, uh, where you can just keep going all the way down to zero. So we have, we have that burnout mode, uh, and we're just, we're just going to keep, keep adding more stuff. Uh, our weight recommendation engine gets literally smarter every month, uh, as we, as we just crunch more data and tune the algorithms and, uh, and we just, uh, released health Apple health kit integration. Um, so now through our mobile app, we can get a broader view of what you're doing in your life. And, and the, the reason we did that is the idea is that data is going to feed into our, our weight recommendation engine. So we can make more intelligent recommendations for folks, uh, based on knowing if they didn't sleep last night or if they're at a certain point in their menstrual cycle or, or whatever, whatever indications we have, uh, will will feed into it as, as well. If you just ran a marathon, <laughs> right? So. Yeah. It's so damn smart. Uh, yeah. What, what are it's, it's, it's endless, right? It's just endless what endless. you can do. And so it's just, we have this like long, like I think this list that goes for years and we're just going to keep doing the most important thing we can every single month to, to just make it smarter. Yeah. I mean, you look at like Amazon, right? It started as an online bookstore. Yeah. Now it's everything, right? Yeah. Like 
tonal can be that like it can, it, it literally, there's so much, there's so many spinoffs possible with what you do. Um, it's, it's really must be a really cool place to look at. So what is, here's the big question at the end of the day for you, right? What is, what does success look like for tonal, right? What, what's, what's the end goal for you, for tonal? What, what does that look like? So I think, you know, we, we started, we kind of started on the heels of the fitness trend, which was this idea of in-home connected fitness. Mm-hmm. I think we actually end a little bit closer to healthcare because with strength training, you can move the needle on diabetes, hypertension, pain, uh, you know, obesity, right. All, all of these things that, that ultimately like you, you make people more fit, but, but the ultimate outcomes are bigger. And so for me, like, how do I know success? It's when you're actually seeing the needle move on, on health in America. Um, we think that our target market for this product is 45 million households, uh, which is, which is pretty, pretty massive. That's a pretty big, uh, chunk of the U S population. Uh, and, and I think with, you know, with that, we, we really do have the ability to, to move the needle. Uh, and that's, you know, that's why we, we get up and so, so get up every day. And so, you know, having people say they got a great workout is, is wonderful. But when they tell us that, you know, they actually achieved their weight loss goal, or they actually have been able to manage pain, uh, those are the things that get us really, really excited. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you have all the tools you need to, to do that. And that's, um, it's great to hear, man. I'm, I'm excited that, uh, you know, you having such a great opportunity to make an impact, have a good head on your shoulders and a good heart in the direction you guys are going with it. So that's, Thank you. that's good. Yeah. You're a good guy. You're a good, Thanks. one of the good guys. Yeah, man. That's awesome. I appreciate that. We're, we're really excited. We're really, really yeah. excited. Yeah, man. Um, well, right on well, Ali, I guess, uh, you know, if people want to get a hold of you, um, you know, is there, is there any place they want to go if they want to get involved in this or if trainers want to get involved in, in the updates, where, where do people go? Uh, so most, most of the information is available on tonal.com. Okay. Uh, so that's, that's just kind of the, the hub, the hub for everything. Uh, we have a number of online, uh, Facebook communities. Uh, people often reach out to me directly on LinkedIn uh, if they want to send me messages and it's not uncommon that people will, uh, will email, uh, support asking that a message be relayed to me. Uh, and those messages do, do get relayed to me. I, um, I don't respond to all of them because a lot of times they're the things that, um, are like, especially like international distribution. And we're just not ready for that kind of stuff. And we get so many of those requests I reply to everyone. It'd be a full-time job. Uh, but we, we do get, I do have a lot of people reaching out and, and it's just, it's a, it's a really engaged community uh, the, this fitness world and, and I'm loving it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're in, um, I mean, it, it's put lightly that you're in a dynamic situation, right? Things are, <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of an understatement. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah we're, like every we're, time we're I moving. talk to you, it's like so moving fast. Yeah. It's moving so fast. It's awesome. It could happen to a better guy. Well, Ollie, thanks again for coming on and sharing your time. I know it's valuable and, uh, appreciate the updates. Cool. Thank you so much, Eric. It's always a pleasure. Thanks for having me on the show and, um, looking forward to uh, chatting with you more. Yeah, man. Keep up the great work. Thanks. Goodbye. Hey, fitness fans. Don't leave yet. It's your host, Eric Malzone, And I have a quick favor to ask. Actually, three favors. So number one, if you're a fan of our show, I asked you to do something that takes under three minutes. Go to iTunes, please, and subscribe to our show. Please, please, please. It means so much to us. It's so important. And then give us a favorable review. We would really, really appreciate it. And uh, I can't tell you how much it means and helps us out. So it only takes two minutes of your day and uh, it means a lot to us. So please do that. Number two, go to our YouTube channel or Fitness Marketing Alliance and uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel there. Number three, if you like this episode or any of the episodes that we've released, share it on social. That's huge. That's a big deal for us. And uh, we put a lot of work into these episodes uh, trying to give you great actionable content uh, for the fitness industry. So that would mean a lot. And that's it. So we have some big plans coming up for this show. I'll be talking about that in the next couple episodes. But thank you so much for listening. It means so much. And uh, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. I'd love to hear from everybody. Eric, E-R-I-C at fitnessmarketingalliance.com.